Hey guys, welcome back. So we are now halfway through October, which is crazy, but I figured now since we're halfway through the month, I wanted to make a video about what I like to use during the month long challenge of Inktober, uh, which is created by Jake Parker. And I wanted to go over my supplies that I like to use um, or that I had chosen to use for this month. I will be using watercolor paper and a more of a mixed media sort of paper. Both these watercolor pads are by the company called Fluid. They're a cold pressed finish and they offer some that nice texture that I really, really like having in my traditional media. And the Daily and Rowney, I think it's pronounced, that is more of a smooth paper finish. It's heavyweight and it takes a lot of different mediums. So far, I really like using the Fluid. I've done one piece on the um, smooth paper. All right, let's talk about black inks. So these are kind of the staple inks that people might be using. I've been using a mix of these. And so these pens right here are Kotatake pens. So a lot of the brands that I'll be using are either Pentel or Kotatake. So these two come with a ink barrel, which makes it super easy to uh, take with me. Now the cap colors actually don't reflect the actual color inside. Some of the Pentel brush pens do. Um, also some of the Kurutake ones don't. The blue one here has a fine tip, uh, but it could also still get a decent broad stroke if I need to. So it makes it easy to fill really big areas, but I could still get a really fine line if I need to. All right, and so this other one here with more of the beige cap, it's a little bit more of a broader brush. This definitely is my go-to for filling huge, big areas. And uh, you can still get a decent thin line, but not as thin as the previous pen I just showed. Okay, so this next pen here, I've had for the longest time. I've been using this for the longest time. It's by Kotatake. It's a double-ended pen, and it has two different tips on each side. This pen here is probably one of my holy grail pens that I've had for a long time in my kit. And it doesn't have a, an actual brush tip. It's more of a felt tip pen, but with that, it still gives a pretty decent line weight. And so one end is a little bit more of a broader side and the other side will be more of a thinner sort of uh, nib. So you, you see here, you can still get pretty decent uh, line strokes here with the broad side. And, uh, but with this, with more of a felt tip, you do get more of that control that you don't necessarily get with a full brush tip pen. It takes a lot, a lot of practice to get complete control with a very, very super flexible brush tip. Now with felt tips, that offers that control, um, but you run the risk of getting frayed nibs and so it's not going to be as crisp of a line as you want. Another pen that I started using maybe like a year or so ago is this one uh, also by Kuretake. It's a, their lettering pen. The one I have right here is a refillable case. And so you can choose any ink cartridge that you want, which is pretty cool. The thinness of this is insane. Um, the color that I have in here is sepia. Uh, it's pretty dark when you, first lay it down, but as it dries, it dries to more of that true sepia tone that you expect. So this is pr this is probably one of the thinnest pens that I have. Um, but as you can see here, the nib itself, also a felt tip, is very, very flexible. So you can still get that really nice line weight with the control. Here is the most probably used pen and talked about pen during Inktober, and that's the Pentel Pocket Brush Pen. It's with, you know, it's signature, um, 
lettering on the handle, uh, all black. You Once you see this pen, you definitely know it's the Pentel Pocket Brush. This pen kicked my butt when it comes to inking. And, and I think, you know, obviously for a good reason, but the, the brush tip is pretty sensitive and I usually have to hold my breath while putting down a line. So you can get really nice thin lines, but you can also get that nice broad stroke when you're doing bigger areas as well. Um, what I usually like to do, I like using, I like using the fatter brush pen from earlier to fill those bigger areas. So then that way I'm not going through ink cartridges with this pen so quickly. All right, now this pen was gifted to me and it's in a very, very beautiful wooden box. It's a Kurotake brush pen. Um, same sort of idea as the Pentel pocket brush pen, but this one feels so much more luxurious. This is a definitely treat yourself sort of brush pen. So I really only use this for line work. Um, I actually find this pen a lot more sensitive than the Pentel pocket brush pen. So what's really nice is that it has a good weight to it in the, the whole pen as a whole. And the brush tip is very, very, very fine. But again, you know, let's get that broad stroke that you want to. But it's super sensitive. So I will warn you, it's, it's gonna kick your butt unless you know you can have full control of br sensitive brush pens like this. I do find the ink not to be true, true black. But that's okay. I still really, really love this pen. It's definitely good to have in a collection and I like keeping it in its nice little box. Okay, so let's talk about fun inks. Colored inks, any sort of accent inks I would be using in my pieces. Okay, so I'll be talking about just kind of the standard grayscale pens that I have in my kit. I like to have kind of a pre-made grays in my kit because that way I don't have to keep watering my black brush pens down or anything like that. Now this pen here I got from Japan. It's sort of a mid-gray tone and uh, which provides kind of like a great mid value for any of the drawings that I'm doing. This one right here is a, it's a Pentel brush pen but they call it a or diluted black or something like that on the packaging. I don't 100% rem remember, but it's basically a good kind of like third tier gray. Now the brush tip is super fine, which is great because then it gets into those nooks and crannies of an illustration that I'm doing. Here is a light, this is my light value gray pen. So all of these, these three, I will definitely be using in conjunction together to get like the fullest range of values as I can when doing a black and white piece. And all of these gray pens are super awesome at layering. Okay, so other fun colors that I'm be using is these two pens right here. Um, both are from Pentel. Now, these are the instances where the actual cap color does inform you the type of color you'll be getting out of the barrel. And they also tag them in, towards the center too, where you take out the ring when you first get the brush pen. So uh, that one right there is a, it's labeled as a metallic red brush. I'm not 100% sure how metallic it really is. Um, when I lay it down, as you see here, it, it's just more of a red. It's not really, I don't see any metallicness to it. This one here is the purple pen, Pentel brush pen. It's more of kind of like a magenta-ish hue, which I'm totally cool with. It's more of like a warmer purple, which I, I actually tend to lean more anyways, and I actually have that color in my hair. Okay, so these two fun pens I discovered maybe like two years ago, and they're also by Kodotake. They're from two specific lines called the Wink of Stella and the Wink of Luna line. They come in all assortment of colors. And so the two I have here is clear and gold. And this clear one is actually just, it's literally filled with clear glitter. So there's no actual pigment, it's just spitting out the glitter, which is super awesome to layer on top of colors and on anything really. So I can use this for prints and embellishing pieces and stuff like that, making it a little bit more special and unique. Now this gold brush pen 
is kind of like my uh, go-to since I couldn't get a hold of the actual Pentel brush gold pen. You, there, it's listed on Amazon. I found this at my local art store and it's been such a great addition to my kit. And I also have the silver one too. Also highly recommend. Now they don't come with refillable barrels, but that's okay. I mean, they, they are pretty affordable as well. Now, another thing you can do is actually make your DIY brush pens by taking a water brush, either from Mattel, Kanetake, um, or any other brands that offer a water brush. And you can actually take bottled inks and dilute them with water and then put them into these brush pens uh, via like plastic syringe or whatnot. And so these two colors I have here, for example, are blue and a pink. Both inks are from Windsor and Newton. So I think what's great is that if you're having a hard time finding particular brush pens, especially in specific colors that you want, or you're just having a hard time finding a brush pen that you like, doing it this way, you can just make your own and then that's pretty cool. And then you can have super customizable colors and um, stuff like that. Okay, so the, these are the, the kind of miscellaneous items that I have in my kit. Okay, so my go-to pencils are cola erases for under sketching or just sketching in general. Colors that I really, really love having on my kit is Tuscan Red and Scarlet Red. And I, when I'm sketching at home, I usually prefer sketching with these because I have a sharpener, um, which makes it easy. I mean, I do have a portable sharpener too. Okay, and then another thing in my kit that I will definitely have is an assortment of erasers, like this Tough Stuff eraser. It's a good thin one, and I also have a fat one from Stadler as well in my kit. And as I was scrounging around to figure out what I wanted to take with me daily this month, I found the Sumo Grip mechanical pencil that I used to have in school. Um, and I actually still had some red colored lead. I also had blue as well, but uh, since I usually like under sketching in red, I figured I'm like, okay, well, let me give this a shot again and, um, and try it out. One thing is that the lead is super sensitive, so you can't put too much pressure in onto the pencil, otherwise it will break like crazy. So I figured that'd be uh, good to try. Okay, so this is my go-to white pen for any white ink details that I want, and it's the Uniball Signo White Ball Point Pen. Um, I've tried other pens, but it, you know, I've tried the Jelly Roll one, and I've tried just other paint pens. They, they just, they don't go on as opaque as I really like from this particular Uniball pen as well. So this is a must have in my kit. Thank you guys so much for sticking around and seeing what's in my pencil bag for the Inktober challenge. Comment down below with what the stuff that you like using as well and leave your social media handles down below and I'll come check out your stuff as well. Mine is also in the description box and I usually try to post it on Instagram as much as I can and share it across all of my social media accounts, Facebook page, Twitter and Tumblr and such. Also, I'll be trying to put out these videos of kind of the behind the scenes of the making of these Inktober pieces. So keep an eye out for those videos as well. And at the end of the month, I'll be compiling a zine of all of my pieces and also offering up the original drawings for sale as well. So, you know, follow me on my social media down below to kind of keep tabs on that and I'll announce more once there is more to announce. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed, go ahead and click that subscribe button and that little bell there to get notified for when I post new art videos here and there. And I hope you guys have a wonderful evening and I will see you guys in the next video. Bye!